I'm Richard Uslin, an attorney. You're watching this video because you'd like to get more information about drunk driving in Cranford. An experienced DWI attorney is going to approach your case from the moment that they meet you. Uh, they're going to want to evaluate you as a witness, whether you're credible, whether you're able to discuss uh, the facts in a clear, concise, uh, truthful way. Uh, another thing that's going to happen initially is the entire case is going to be played out in the attorney's mind. Uh, what kinds of issues are going to be presented? Uh, the first one has to do with whether or not there was a reasonable suspicion that a motor vehicle violation had been committed uh, to justify uh, the police detaining you in your car or whether they're exercising a community caretaking function. Uh, somebody they thought may be in need of help who it turns out was or was not in need of help. It's that initial contact that we have to evaluate and see whether we can avoid in a legal manner. Uh, whether that's by a motion to suppress evidence uh, as a result of an unlawful search or seizure, whether there was not probable cause or reasonable suspicion to pull someone over. Uh, the next thing that has to be evaluated is whether there was true operation in this particular case. Uh, very often you may see someone that's uh, sitting in a parking lot. The motor may not even be on. Uh, however, oddly enough, there are cases where, in some instances, that could be considered operation based upon the intent of the person who is in the car. What is it that they intended to do? Uh, on the other hand, almost the very same set of facts can result in a different conclusion. And obviously, if there's no operation, uh, there is no DWI offense that's been committed. So this is something that's challenged and that the attorney focuses on in discussing the case with you initially. Next, uh, and foremost, is whether or not there actually was legal intoxication. Uh, this could be uh, proved in one of two ways. Uh, the preferable way for the prosecution is to submit breath test results. And if you're a certain limit, a .08 or above blood alcohol concentration, that's intoxication under the law. Uh, but if those breath test results are not admitted into evidence, uh, there's a much more long, drawn-out process the prosecution needs to utilize to demonstrate your physical or mental abilities to drive were deleteriously affected by alcohol. So as the attorney is speaking to you in this initial consultation, they're asking questions uh, that are designed to elicit information as to whether or not we can mount a challenge to the admissibility of those breath tests test results. When did you last drink? When did you last eat? Did you have anything in your mouth when you were pulled over by the police or while you were at headquarters? Was there radio frequency interference in the breath testing room? Were you observed for 20 continuous minutes? Uh, were there medical conditions that were compromising your ability to do physical tests uh, or that may compromise the breath test results themselves? Uh, was the machine being operated properly by the operator? Uh, were the breath test uh, results true as a result of uh, uh, radio frequency interference or were there uh, digital downloads that can demonstrate that the machine was not operating correctly at that particular time? These are all questions that an attorney with experience is going to focus on in speaking to you early on while things are fresh in your mind. I'm Richard R. Uslin, for over 30 years providing statewide services for people charged with crimes, DWI, and all municipal court offenses. For more information, visit my website indicated on this video or speak to another experienced, reputable, and dedicated attorney.